num num num. Hello. Hey out there, how's it going? How is everybody doing right now today on this? Um, I think it's fair to say, at least here in Oshawa and Durham region where we're at, it is a very hot and humid day. I hope wherever you are, that you are keeping nice and cool and uh, yeah, staying hydrated. Hydration is important. <laughs> And hello, of course, if, oh, oh, there's that connection software thing again, but hey, I'm still here. So please, if you're out there, hey, Daryl, let me know if you can see me and hear me. I see that Daryl can see me and hear me. So happy, so happy that you're here. So for folks who might be turning, like tuning in for the very first time, welcome. Welcome to our Wednesday pop-up art studios. Let's see if I'm still going here. I think I'm still going. Can you still hear me and see me? I'm cutting in and out here a little bit on my end. But yes, welcome to our live stream pop-up art studios. This is something that we do every Wednesday afternoon from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's just an opportunity for us to gather in this virtual way, create together, connect. Hi, Wendy. If you're seeing folks uh, in the chat, that's because they're saying hello and they're typing in the few comments here and there. If you say hello that way, I'm more than happy to say hi back and learn about all the creative things you're doing, things you're thinking about doing, projects you're working on, maybe even talking about, you know, things you're having, you know, that creative block with. And maybe perhaps together as a community, we can work together to help unblock that so you can get back to creating. This is a great place to do that. Of course, if you just want to watch or listen wherever you are, that's okay too. I can only see the folks who are watching. Oh, excellent. Hey, Shelly. Uh, when you say hello and you, you know, enter stuff into the chat. Otherwise, I just trust that you're out there watching and enjoying uh, and having the best day and the best moment that you can with us because that's why we're here so that we can find a way to bring a little beauty, a little wellness, a little creative growth and inspiration into one another's days. Now let's see what I've got going on here. We have some folks who are watching out there. What are you working on? If you'd like to share, please let me know. I'm thinking if from the, if you folks saw the picture, I'm thinking about working with some leftover, some textiles and some sample fabrics that we have here. I think actually Wendy might've donated some of the fabric that we're using today that we're gonna be exploring and playing with. And Shelly's, oh nice, organizing DVDs. And that's the other thing folks. If you are wherever you are and you're just not feeling that creative impulse, hey, Caitlin, that's okay too. You can just watch or listen. We're here to keep you company. And who knows, maybe some of that creativity might sneak its way in and you might find yourself getting artsy later on in your day. And if you can only stay for a few minutes to say hi or to watch a little bit, that's okay. You can dip in and out of this live stream. I don't expect everyone to stay for the whole hour and a half, but if you want to, of course you're more than welcome. I love it. You get to hang out with me and I get to hang out with you and we have time to connect. And Caitlin saying hello has just reminded me of something else. For folks who missed the Tuesday night wellness art group, that we host, uh, not on Facebook, it's a Zoom group that we host, but you see the event for it on Facebook. We had to cancel it this week. So uh, we were really sad, we didn't wanna do it, but we just, you know, we had to because Caitlin wasn't feeling up to it, but Caitlin's feeling much better now and has offered to host it Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. so we can test out the wellness art group at a new time. And Caitlin, if you want to give folks a little intro to what the group's about, please feel free. I know there are some folks out there who've been curious about it. We've had some questions here and there about what exactly the Wellness Art Group is. It's hosted by Caitlin and Kat V. Some folks might know them from the studio. They were both coordinators there when we had the physical space. They're extraordinary human beings and creators, and they take turns hosting the group, sometimes host it together. And it's just a really nice, gentle, supportive environment in which folks can create along a certain theme, reflect on how their weeks have been, their days have been, and use art to create space for more wellness in their life. Maybe that's like a little mini intro, but Caitlin, if you wanna add on to that, please feel free. 
And Wendy says, making sun catchers. Oh, wow. Okay. Making sun catchers from beads and crystals from an old light fixture. I love it. I, I love it. Sun catchers are perhaps one of my favorite things in the world. And I, you know, it's funny. I haven't created one here in the live stream yet. Huh? I'll get to that. I'll get to that. And Wendy, uh, for those of you who don't know, recently started a YouTube channel and I was just finally dropping in to check out some of the content. You have some really cool unboxing videos there. And with all the lovely, interesting things you're finding and sourcing, I can only imagine the kind of fantastic artwork and jewelry and sun catchers they'll be turned into. So I can't wait to see more of your work, Wendy. Yeah, so if folks are working on, you know, you don't feel like making art, that's okay. You can do your laundry, you can organize your DVDs like Shelly's doing. Maybe, you know, maybe you're doing some homework or you're uh, working while you listen and that's okay too. I won't tell your boss, I promise. <laughs> and of course, if folks are watching after it's been archived, after the live stream is done, Welcome. Hi. Hello to you too. You matter as well. Thanks for tuning in and watching. I know not everyone is available in the middle of the afternoon to join a live stream like this. So I appreciate how, you know, folks make time for it in their own ways throughout their days in ways that feel right to them. And Caitlin saying, yeah, you said it perfectly. Excellent. Uh, the wellness art groups are pretty laid back. Like you said, we have a new theme to explore each week through an activity and a community conversation. And the community support is absolutely wonderful. I love it. So that's the wellness art group, uh, normally taking place on Tuesday nights. This one taking place this Friday at 2 p.m. But hey, if, you know, who knows, if a lot of people enjoy coming out during the afternoon on a Friday, maybe we'll create an afternoon wellness art group as well. Why not? And Joe, hello, Joe. Joe says, hello, everyone. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Absolutely. I've got my tea here. I couldn't quite face a coffee, like a hot coffee this afternoon. So I'm making myself a nice peppermint tea. Just something soothing and comforting. Uh, yeah, and hydrating all at the same time. And Joe, I think there are congratulations in order in your life as well. I think there's a new addition to Joe's family. So please pass on my congratulations, my love, abundant love and congratulations to Olivia, who some folks might've seen in the chat here before. I think they've just had a lovely baby. So that's such a beautiful thing. It's, I just have to send that love out there into the world. And you know, it's how actually it's got me thinking recently. Um, just kind of reflecting on love, on care, but not in a kind of Valentine's heart kind of way, more along the lines of the little things in life that can have quite powerful impacts for each of us, if that makes sense. Oh my goodness, it's Carlos dropping by for a speedy howdy from the UK. Hi, Carlos. Uh, gotta head out again. Glad you're hydrating. Sending love to y'all. Have an awesome session today. And you have an awesome day too, Carlos. It's so good. Thanks for dropping by and saying hello. I know you're awfully busy where you are visiting from the UK. Look at us all international like. And Caitlin saying hi and bye as well. See, this is a lovely little place sometimes for community members to just check in, say a quick hello, maybe even give one another an update about how they're doing. So feel free if you have something you'd like to say or add into the conversation, you're more than welcome to just type it in the comments. But otherwise, if you just feel like hanging back and listening and reflecting as we go along, that's totally okay. Um, yeah, so thinking about the little things, little things that have a big impact. And it's funny how something that happens in someone else's life might be that catalyst for growth or change or reflection that you've been waiting for. And in that moment, uh, it's kind of this beautiful ripple effect for me at least. And it's just been a very reflective week thinking about the things that I love in my life, the simple things, the little things that make a difference and the little things that I have in abundance uh, that money can't buy. And of course, I think too about when I think about abundance, I also think about, you know, just this gorgeous, the supplies that we have as the Living Room Community Art Studio, much of which people have donated. So money can buy some things. Um, but as I was going through these materials for today, for example, just digging around in what we have here, getting inspiration, I was just 
so appreciative of everyone who over the years has shared the wealth of their knowledge, of their time with us. Of course, it's always wonderful when people share the wealth, literal wealth, to help you know move this project forward. Um, but there's something beautiful in that sharing that community can do, that sharing economy, right? A community of care, an economy of care, perhaps. So I don't know, that's just a little bit about where my mind has been today. So I think maybe to start warming up, I'm just going to let some of that flow through and see what gets created here, just in a little scribble drawing to start. And actually this scribble drawing was inspired by Caitlin just a little bit. Because I know in the past, Caitlin has created these fabulous, fabulous bookmarks through uh, your Instagram where you sell your work and you create beautiful things, beautiful wrapped crystal jewelry and, and bookmarks as well, beautiful watercolor bookmarks. Now, what do I have here? Oh, did I, did I actually tidy up something that I need? Oh, isn't that, I tidy up and then I need it. Mary teaches you for tidying up. Oh, there we go. Hi, I'm back. So I'm just going to do a little watercolor on this to start on my simple handy dandy praying watercolor kit. Such a nice little set. Don't know what I'd do without it. And I just have some mixed media paper here. It's an off cut from another project that I did. And I'm just going to let myself fill it with color. Just as a really quick, really gentle warm up. And then after, when I'm done, there might be an opportunity to give it a little bit more shape. Maybe add in uh, some fine lines, some marker work over top to heighten a few things. Some, to bring some definition to it. This kind of warm up is always really nice for me as well because I kind of discover what my mood is for the day, my color mood, if that makes any sense. Some days I'm drawn to certain colors. Some days I challenge myself to create and use things I don't normally do, don't normally use. It's almost like a little check-in with myself. Just to see where I'm at right now through color, through lines, through shape. And as you can see, I'm not thinking about it too much at all. I'm just throwing that color on there and letting it do what it needs to do. And again, appreciating the little things too. The very fact that I have things like this to create with is such a such a gift. It has been a challenging year. I think that might be an understatement for a lot of folks out there. Little things like this, little activities like this, kind of help me grounded and help me get by. Oh, and Carlos, Carlos's mama says hi. Nice howdy, a big howdy from the UK, and that you're very pretty. Oh my, what? Come on, no. No, no more. Yes, please. No. <laughs> I am such a ham. I apologize for that. If you want to take back uh, your pretty comment because of that horrible behavior, I totally understand. And thank you, Mama, for uh, Mama of Carlos, for bringing such a wonderful human into this world. Carlos has brought so much joy and insight to our community. I'm so glad he's having a chance to have a visit with you folks, but I, I know everyone here wants him back as well. He is an extraordinary human. <laughs> it's another thing we're so lucky. We have a lot of extraordinary humans in our community. And I'm realizing even now as I'm painting this, I'm discovering that this is not water, this is not mixed media paper. I think this is Bristol board. And I can tell by how it's sitting on top of the paper and not soaking in. And you get a different kind of effect. I don't know how easy it is to see with the camera. But it's almost like um, 
It looks almost like markers or alcohol inks that have been applied to the paper. And hello, Donald. Oh, lovely. Donald, so nice to see you. It's so nice to know you're out there listening to the live stream. Oh, and there's a, oh, there's, you're saying that uh, another Carlos knows. Oh, interesting. So Carlos knows. So maybe all the Carloses in the world, I say, you're awesome, wherever you are. Why not? Let's just put that out there into the world. And Don, how are you doing? I was thinking about you today as I was uh, making some planning for the inside of the mobile art hive, and I was thinking we gotta have we gotta have a place for at least one guitar in this mobile art hive. And yesterday in the little live stream that I did, there was a moment where I was talking. It some folks were asking about the art hive. Roxanne wasn't able to make it, so we will reschedule in the fall. Uh, She's so sorry that she wasn't able to make the live stream. But of course, music is Roxanne's superpower. And I would say the same thing for Dawn, for anyone out there in the community who knows Dawn. Sometimes folks even refer to Dawn as the music man of Oshawa. But definitely making space in the mobile archive for guitar at least one. And that way we always have music at our fingertips. And who knows, perhaps even some music uh, lessons. I know that when we had the studio, Don sometimes would have uh, spontaneous guitar lessons for people in the community who wanted to learn. And was just such a great teacher. And Don says, I would love to help in any way I can. Excellent. Well, you know what? You're always helpful when, you know, in, when in the past and when you're around. And even when you're not around, you know, you're, you're kind of a living room champion. And I appreciate that. So now a little... So definitely have a feeling color-wise about where things are at. Oh, <laughs> and Don saying wrong, Carlos. Well, that's why I extended that appreciation to all Carloses out there. Why not? Who knows? Maybe that Carlos needed a little boost. In a way, it's like found art. For folks who aren't familiar, it's when artists will leave little works of art in the community for other people to find and take home. There's actually a found art site. Uh, I think it might be a foundart.org that people can sign up for and you put a little number on the back of your art and if someone finds your work of art they can log in and enter that they found it and so you have this interesting uh, kind of, I mean tracking system is too strong a word but it's a way of staying connected and knowing where your art is in the world and having opportunities to connect with the artists who created it to let them know how it made a difference in your life. Hey Brandon! And I was just thinking that sometimes it's the same with compliments or those little boosts, informal boosts with the people we know. You know, compliments with consent are fabulous, but is there a way to let folks we haven't met, to say what are the things we can use that don't necessarily require consent to brighten people's days, strangers' days perhaps, whether we leave it in a message, in a piece of found art, or even sometimes those things we shout out or say, you know, as we're passing someone by. Something to think about, especially as we begin to engage with community again and want to demonstrate um, the kindness and just that, you know, the joy in seeing other human beings again in ways we haven't for a long time. How do we do that with respect? Another thing I've been thinking about. Because there are definitely times where I think people intending and trying to offer compliments to others unintentionally make people feel uncomfortable and super weird. So folks, it looks like I'm having a blue kind of day. So my little watercolor warm-up here is definitely informative. Hmm.
Just always a nice little check-in to see where am I at? What is the color of my day? So I'm going to put that aside for now and you know what, I'm going to get stuck in on the next project because I know it might take a little longer. Lovely. Thank you, Caitlin, for the inspiration. And where can I put this? I'll just, I'll just lean that over there. Now the next project, which I, you know, thank you, Wendy, for the inspiration, comes from these fabric samples. Now, I don't know how many folks out there have fabric sample booklets. I know at the living room we have a bunch and I love them. I, I love them, but it's sometimes difficult to figure out what to do with the fabric samples and I hate throwing them out because these are really lovely pieces of fabric, right? But sometimes, as you can see, they come with these sticky backings on part of the fabric, little labels. Oh, that one doesn't. See, every once in a while you find something like that which is free, but here's a great example with the pattern on it and things like that, just all the different information about the fabric swatch for folks. And so these little bits and pieces can make working with these fabrics very difficult. I mean, not the end of the world difficult, but it's an additional challenge for using it in any other projects. And there are sure, I mean, there, there are ways of uh, removing those labels. If anyone out there has a really good technique, perhaps soaking it and then rubbing it off the same way you would with a transfer of some kind. But if anyone has like a surefire way of removing those stickers from fabric samples, I would love to hear it. But in the meantime, if you have these kind of samples and you don't know what to do, well, why not try and find a way to incorporate it? So I've got these pieces that I pulled out today. And I'd like to do something with them. Do what? I think perhaps something to, like a keepsake book of some kind, or maybe a traveler's journal. I'm also preparing workshop kits for the Mobile Art Hive, so I've been thinking about different things we can do with all uh, the abundance of supplies we already have in stock. And I know we have a lot of fabric samples, so figuring out what can we do with these? I know there's a lot, but if you have ideas out there, if you're listening and you have ideas of things, workshop kits we could put together for the community, things that anyone might be able to do with supplies or materials they might already have on hand or have, you know, be able, like easy to source, please let me know, put it in the comments. But a traveler's journal is one of the things I was thinking about for sure, because it doesn't necessarily require sewing, although you can add embellishments and things like that. It doesn't necessarily, you know, require being able to bind anything. You just need some elastic and yeah, a little bit of patience, I suppose. So looking at these fabrics, these are definitely, these feel like um, early nineties fabrics to me, perhaps maybe mid nineties, a lot of these floral patterns, watercolor patterns, kind of going back to like a, a call back to Laura Ashley and all of those things. Yeah, interesting. And I'm not this kind of person usually. I don't think anyone in the world has ever seen me in pastels. Not that it won't ever happen. I'm just not a pastel color kind of person. Black, gray, and blue and burgundy are kind of as colorful as I get in my wardrobe. But these are fun to play with because you can pull fabrics, you can pull colors out of them to highlight, to embellish, and I think I might do a little bit of that as well later. But to start, I'm just going to figure this out as I go. So this to me feels like a really good size for a travel journal. It was already cut, although I do have some pinking shears here, so I might try and even out that edge. Now the trick with pinking shears, at least the ones I have, is again they're donated. So let's see how sharp they are. Okay. Come on. Oh, they're working. The textile creators are with me on this day. Oh, they were until I jinxed it. Haha, -ha, you're back. 
Okay, so there we go. So just evening it out a little bit. And of course the pinking shears are fantastic. Any Anyone out there who's used them before knows it's one way of controlling how your fabric unravels. Not that that's a bad thing. We have a little bit of that going on here. But the pinking shears give it a little extra life. If you wanted to stop, you know, it, like finish the edge with a sewing machine, that would be one way of stopping any fraying from happening. You could use, if you're a fancy pants sewer who has access to these kind of supplies, you could use a fray check, which is like a little kind of uh, transparent glue that you put along the edges that prevents the threads from fraying and getting all tangly. You could even just sew a line along the edge to stop it from fraying and that's okay but today I'm not going to bother with any of that. And I might as things as things go on you know it might even be something over time that looks really nice. Right? So I think the name of the Traveler's Journal comes from I just want to see if I have the right size. So yeah there's a size of just ordinary eight and a half by eleven paper. Fits really nicely into this if this we're using this as a cover. Yeah, there we go. And the idea, the term travel journal, although I don't know the exact history, I have a sense that it refers to the kind of journal that you can carry around, throw around, take with you anywhere you go, crumple up, you know, that kind of thing, put in your pocket and it'll be okay. So they tend to be things that are a little more flexible as opposed to a hard bound, a hard cover journal, which is cool. So you want something that has a bit of give to it. Again, not the end of the world if you decide to make a cardboard insert for the cover. And I feel like I've been talking a whole lot here. How are folks doing out there? Time for a check-in. Maybe I'll just trim those threads a tiny bit for now. If anyone else out there has made a traveler's journal, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear about it too. So for example, for this journal, if this is going to be the cover, what I might do is create a little pocket at the front. Okay, so here we go. Come on, pinking shears, work with me. <laughs> They're done. They said no more, no more. So I'm just gonna go over here. Oh, fabric scissors, gotta love them. The favorite splurge. Have being able to have a pair of scissors devoted to cutting fabric may seem like a simple silly thing but again it's one of those little things that can be so nice let's just trim that on this side as well put those aside who knows might be able to use those for something else That might help a little bit, just give, hmm, maybe cutting off a little bit. I might have to make my pages smaller, but for the cardboard, that'll be okay. Now what am I going to do? A little bit of slow stitching, folks. A little bit of slow stitching. I could glue these pieces in with some fabric glue. I'm thinking for today now. I'm just gonna use a simple, simple running stitch. To pull it together and make those two little pockets in the front of the journal. Of course, a travel journal might seem like a strange thing to make in a period where we can't really travel that much. <laughs> 
but there will be times we will be able to move around and travel again soon. And you know what, as we've seen even in this call, even this live stream, we have a little more freedom now, which is great. Freedom to visit those we love, appreciate being together in all the ways. We don't necessarily know what tomorrow holds, but we can appreciate today. I'm using a needle that I usually include in the weaving, the embroidery kits that we have at the living room, so it's got a, a duller head to it, which is great, because you can't really stab yourself with this needle, so for me today, when I'm a little bit distracted, it's a good needle to use, but I do have to fight with the fabric just a little bit more to get it through. That's okay. In the absence of being able to travel, Let's face it, I don't always have money to travel where I want to travel anyways. It's been really, really nice to revisit, kind of be a tourist in my own life and go back to exploring the memories of places that I've been or the experiences that I've had or to try and view the world outside my front door like I was a tourist. I'm wondering if anyone out there has ever done that. I had a teacher in drama school, in theater school, and one of the exercises he used to give us as a class of just like young actors, I was going to say young idiots, so I apologize to all my, my colleagues out there doing amazing things in the world, um, but we were, we were kind of just dumb kids. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong if you are a dumb kid right now, enjoy it and just appreciate those moments, but okay, I'm going to move off this topic. Um, one of the exercises he would give us was to be a camera and go out into the world and walk around the streets that we'd become so accustomed to and taking, you know, completely taking for granted and try to do our best to look at them with new eyes as if we'd never been there before, as if we'd chosen to go to this place like, uh, like we were traveling. Now you can also take that a lot of different ways. You can, when you choose to be a camera, there might be certain stories you, you know, can look for when you go out in your day. And that's a whole other thing. But uh, for this exercise, one of them was just to be a tourist in our own world. And he would also instruct us to do this. Like we had a viewfinder to look through, which as a young person, you don't want to do at all because you think, oh, this makes me look stupid. But as I've gotten older, I think I don't care if I look stupid. So it's a really fun thing to do. You might see me doing that as we walk around town. And that's just adding a frame, just adding a frame to what you see. Because sometimes, as we know as artists or creators, that's all we need to do to make something special is to put a frame on it, to give it some structure, to choose what parts of our experience we're including in the story we're telling. And this simple, somewhat silly exercise was really beautiful for me. It reminded me that I have choice. I have agency in my own life. And sometimes, especially on days where perhaps I'm really like feeling really down on the place that I live in, or when other people are really down on the place that I live in, and wherever we live in the world, it doesn't matter. You might live in a world-class city. There's always someone complaining about it. There are different struggles everywhere, wherever we go. But sometimes we forget because we're just in our own space, in our own city, in our own town so often. We lose that common ground. But if with this exercise, choosing to look at the world that I live in, like I'm a tourist, like I want to be there and I've never been there before, you begin to discover things, you begin to explore 
and see beauty where you didn't see beauty, see interest and intrigue where you perhaps didn't before. It brings things to life in a new and beautiful way. So I gotta think. Yeah, that was, what was that teacher's name? Brian. He was British. He had a little dog named Tinker. What was his last name? I can't believe I've forgotten it. He was a very special, special teacher in our lives. In any case, I thank him for that exercise. So why was I bringing it up with regards to this activity? Yes, of course, because this travel journal can be used in our own life in everyday ways. The challenge, the challenge is, the challenge is if you choose to accept it, to enter in your own world, no matter how restrictive it may feel at times, but to choose to move through that world with wonder. What if I give you that challenge? Who's up for it? Who wants to make themselves open to wonder and discovery where they're living? And this can be done in your own house or your own apartment, your own backyard as well. It's one of the things I really loved about that exercise. And I think it might be a trick that a lot of writers use as well. Because stories are everywhere. And perhaps this is a good opportunity to remind folks, oh, Dawn's in. Yes, excellent. Right? And as a singer, as a songwriter, I imagine, Dawn, that's something that, you know, you probably do without realizing it when you're moving through the world. Because where do, where do our ideas come from? Where do our stories come from? They have to come from somewhere. So perhaps from the experiences around us. And what happens if you choose to look at, you know, just a different lens to see the world through, a different intention. You never know what you'll find. Challenge accepted, Dawn says, excellent. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what the results are. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> and I'm gonna do the same. Maybe that's what I'll use this journal for. Just to collect different little things, different little ideas, different moments in my day. See how I got there? I got a little impatient. So folks, because I got a little impatient and tried to do a bunch of stitches at once and that's what happens. It bunched up a tiny bit. Not the end of the world, just a tiny bit. Yeah, stories are all around us. And I think sometimes we think we're the only ones in our own world. We think no one else understands or everyone else, everywhere else is different. And I think after this year, it's been a difficult thing to not think, right? Hello, Simone. Simone says, hello, everyone. Wonder is a great intention, Mary, and it can be so simple. I agree. Thank you, Simone. And congratulations on your group. Simone, everyone, Simone has started hosting, I hope, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you're also hosting some wellness and creativity groups online as well. So if you'd like to post them here, because all resources are good resources. And as far as I'm concerned, you can't have too many options or opportunities to take care of yourself and connect with other folks. Simone has been doing some great stuff online. I'm assuming great because you're great. I hope that's okay. <laughs> but wonder, yeah, wonder is an underrated experience. We expect it from the big things in life, but the little things, wonder is everywhere. I, I think it's, it can be in the little things as well. So it's nice that that struck a chord with some folks out there. I can't wait to see what happens with that. Sometimes that's all it takes to choose, to try, to see the world with some fresh eyes. And not necessarily in a Pollyanna kind of way, just to be open to noticing the, noticing things. But if I see people walking around town with the little frame up, I'll know. <laughs> We're telling stories. We're finding the story in our everyday life. 
All right, let's get stitching. Slow stitching is beautiful, but I often worry that perhaps it's not interesting for folks on Facebook. So my question too, if anyone has stories of the little wonders that they've experienced in their day to day, perhaps it surprised you, perhaps you weren't looking for something, but it caught you off guard, changed the way you looked at the world for the rest of the day or the rest of your life. Please feel free to share. And if not, that's okay too. But on days where I'm having difficulty, it certainly helps to choose to be an adventurer in my own life, a traveler. Because then things, I don't know, they, instead of things that are happening to me, it's a way for me to reframe things, um, to reframe the experiences in a more active and dynamic way so that I can tackle them slightly, like from a different angle. Hello, Thread. He's sneaking out of my needle there. What you doing? Da, 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 da. Now, if you had a sewing machine, you could get this part done in no time at all. Hello, Nicole. Or should I say Aunt Nicole? Congratulations, Aunt. Congratulations, Nicole, on the new addition to your family. And of course, Nicole's here, everybody, so you know what that means. We can find out what day it is. But no pressure. Perhaps today might be the one day you might be away from your calendar, and that's okay if that's the case. I never finished off that story too about what we did when we returned in theater school after going and collecting our stories. So the the challenge our teacher gave us on this day was to go out into the world looking through the frame like our life was a movie and what we were seeing uh, was almost like documentary footage or well sometimes life is stranger than fiction so it could be fictional footage in a way. Um, and just to bring back what we saw and from those moments we ended up putting together these stories that we could recreate for one another. So for the writers in the room, they could write down the stories. For the people who wanted to make graphic novels, they could create images for them. And all the actors, you know, the people who just came now naturally, we could get up on our feet and actually play out these scenes, which is always an interesting activity to do. And something about getting it out and having an opportunity to examine and reflect on it, suddenly you see other options and possibilities, and before you know it, you are writing a script or writing a play. But you gotta do it first. Getting out there. Making space for wonder in your life. And welcome folks, if there's people who are joining our live stream, thank you so much for being here. As I say at the beginning of every live stream, I understand that not everyone is going to be able to stay for the full hour and a half, and that's okay. This is just an opportunity for me to create space for people to drop into and say hi and make art with me if you want, or watch or listen or chat with other people in the comments. Similar to what we might do in the actual studio space when we had it. People, you know, not everyone stayed for the whole day, and that was okay. You make use of the time and the space and the energy there to do what you need to do. If you want to make art, that's fabulous. If you want to listen while you take care of other stuff, that's okay too. Art hives. Another way of explaining or looking at an art hive is it is a, are places for creative social interaction. So while that doesn't always involve making a thing, 
there is that expectation of creative, like creative contribution, being engaged in a creative way. And there's lots of ways we can do that. Of course, this is a super busy time for lots of people out there in the world as well. So as this is live streaming, it's August, mid to late August. I don't know, what part of August would this be? I suppose late August. So there's lots of things happening out there in the world. Schools are getting ready to begin again. Towards the end of the month, people might be moving house or moving apartment. Lots of interesting things happening. That, you know, are things that are taking up space in people's minds. Oh, hello. And Simone is saying also, thinking about small moments that have inspired some wonder today. I was just out buying some, <laughs> I was just out buying some TP. Uh, and decided to walk through Queen's Park here in Toronto. I was taking in all the beautiful maple and oak trees, listening to the cicadas on the hot, humid day, and taking in the city views. A short walk helped break up the day. Now I'm sipping some homemade lemonade. Oh, that sounds like an ideal kind of morning, but I see how all those pieces looked out on their own without the experience of you really investing in them are kind of like, yeah, you know, it's a walk, it's trees, it's an errand. But there was magic in those moments for you, something that was more than just running the errand. And I get that not every day, every time, we're not always going to have time to make moments out of buying toilet paper, but it's there. I think that's the interesting thing. Those moments are always available to us. And that's one of my favorite things about this time of year too, Simone, the cicadas, hearing them, or cicadas rather, cicada, cicada. Uh, <laughs> with that fascinating buzz, hum, sing song. It's an extraordinary sound, isn't it? But it's one of my favorite sounds in the world. And whenever I hear it, I remember it like I'm reminded of just heat and kind of an ease to the day. That sound, that uh, cicada sound or, cic or cicada sound uh, seems to remind me. It's just, it's just a reminder to me to relax. This is the time where we can all take a moment to slow down a little bit. Because sooner rather than later, things will get cool and we'll get busy again. Trust and treasure these moments. Kind of natural moments where we're, the environment is telling us to slow down a little bit. And not everyone can do that, I appreciate that. But if you can, even if it's only for a few minutes every day, not a bad thing, right? To create those moments and create those memories for yourself. All right, pocket, pockets accomplished. And homemade lemonade, oh, delicious. That reminds me too that you can share recipes here, folks, as well. If you've got stuff to share, links, uh, blogs, tumblers, pictures of artwork, recipes for homemade lemonade, feel free to share them in the comments. Always a lovely thing. That's another part of our creativity, right? And Sarah, hello, Sarah. Sarah saying, hello, welcome. Sarah saying, Noticing the wonder in little things around the apartment these past five weeks in lockdown in Vietnam, wow, hello and welcome, all the way from Vietnam, has brought surprising moments of joy. Shadows of the house plant on the wall in the late afternoon sunlight, raindrops racing down the windows in a welcome long-awaited rainstorm, the view of the neighborhood through a green glass wine bottle sitting on the sill, that sense of childhood or wanderer wonder seems essential to awe and gratitude just to be here. How lucky to be able to experience this and to feel wonder. Oh gosh, you just took me on a little trip, a little travels right there. Sarah, thank you. And Sarah's saying thank you for this reminder. Very happy to have found your community. Very happy, we're the ones, I'm happy that you have found us. Thank you so much. That just, you helped create a little world around me. And I was there with you for a moment as well. What a beautiful place to visit. What a beautiful place to visit. And another wonderful, lovely reminder, just about 
what we might have around us, the things that are here that we might not always notice. In our own homes, in our own backyards. Lovely, lovely little moments of travel within our own lives. Thank you for that. Wow, if anyone else wants to share, please do. I'm enjoying that. It helps me feel refreshed and reinvigorated. Opening up little worlds, little windows into the world. And Simone says, oh my goodness, beautiful, Sarah. I agree, uh, 100, and, 100 million percent. And Simone saying, yes, that's exactly how I felt. There we go, common ground. It helped me slow down and acknowledge the world outside. Working at my computer screen, yeah, I never regret it when I take myself out for a walk, even a short one, as you say. That's, there's so much truth in that. And I, I think we forget that that's a thing sometimes. Even just taking a moment to step outside. I was working this morning and you know, that's a, a lovely thing if you have animals in your life. Be oh, oh no, I just, I just committed a, a fiber arts faux pas. I cut paper with fabric scissors. That's, that's the equivalent to washing my paintbrush out in my coffee cup. <gasps> I'll have to write a letter to the textile artists of the world, confessing and apologizing, do penance for it. <laughs> um, they won't care. There is no such thing. I just, I just made that up. Um, just in case you didn't know that. This morning, my animals reminded me to take a little break and they are very good for that. Not everyone can have animals in their life and I appreciate there's a lot that comes along with it, but in this case, Alice, Alice, my long dog, wanted to go outside. And so I took her in the yard just for a moment. And I was really, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, I don't have time for this, Alice. I have to get back to work. Uh, but I went outside and again, all those other lovely sounds and the smells and the heat, it's just that shift your body needs some time to appreciate. What it also did was open up a possibility that I hadn't been expecting because we have some new neighbors and they just moved in a few weeks ago and they happened to be sitting out in their yard and this wonderful, spontaneous uh, conversation unfolded and just sort of over the fence talking about plants and gardens and you know what grows well and I had an opportunity to learn about them and that's something that wouldn't have happened otherwise. So just making space for that in my own day because of my dog, my lovely little silly dog. It was a beautiful moment and a new memory to take forward with me. Something, something good for my brain to play with over the next little while. And Nicole, Nicole says, seeing my beautiful niece is such a wonderful experience. I was also recently camping at a trailer park. Oh, nice, some trailer park stories. There was a boat in the middle of the pond you can swim in. Oh, the pond you can swim in, not the boat in the pond. Never mind. That was a, I didn't read that very well, Nicole. I apologize. There was a boat in the middle of a pond that you can swim in. One of the days was extremely hazy in the morning and it was very creepy yet cool. It was a cool experience, a creepy cool experience. That's a lovely thing when the mist rises off of water. That is, it is, it's like a, a movie moment where you just get to experience where you are as a liminal space because it's very brief, isn't it? Those moments shift and they disappear so quickly sometimes. But if you're there at that moment, what a, what a beautiful moment to be present in. And Nicole says as well, there was a rooster there that didn't understand, <laughs> that didn't understand he was only supposed to crow in the morning. He crowed all day and part of the night. And, I <laughs> and Nicole laughed every time. That is lovely. And you know, Nicole, the joy you carry around with you in your life, I couldn't and wouldn't expect anything else. Of course you'd laugh. Other folks might curse, but you laughed. That's something special just about you. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I know it fits, that works wonderfully. So now I'm just gonna see this project. It's something simple. I'm glad I tackled it. I'm glad I tackled it with you folks here. Okay, so here we go. The beginning 
of our traveler journal. Now the paper's a little smaller than I expected, so I might have to adjust what I put in, but for all you junk journal fans out there, this is another great way to make use of paper that you wouldn't know how to otherwise use. So I'm just gonna tear some of these pages out. I'm also gonna use some of pieces of paper that orphaned printer pages, you know, when sometimes you, you set the printer on and you don't realize that it's the, you know, just little logos being printed or little codes being printed places where you don't necessarily need them to be. So this is a great way to repurpose that paper. And it can be different sizes. There's no reason why your junk journal pages can't be different sizes. How many folks have worked with the junk journal out there? I really love the idea of it. I love the different things you can do with it. Let's borrow some of this paper over here too. But yes, please, if other folks have moments that you can share like that, any parts of your day where you've turned into a traveler in your own world and just experience that sense of wonder from the little things in your own life. So we don't have to travel very far sometimes. And it, it is always a really fascinating thing for me to remember too. With Sarah with, with that experience from Vietnam because wherever we happen to be living, no matter where you're living. Oh no, my computer battery is getting low. Oh no. This live stream might end rather abruptly because I'm just realizing that I forgot the power cord downstairs. So folks, if I disappear, I love you. And I'm so happy that you're here. If I disappear, we'll be back again next Wednesday. And don't forget that tomorrow we have the writer's room group at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Friday, Caitlin is hosting the wellness art group Zoom at Friday because she had to cancel this Tuesday evening. So it's Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're welcome to drop in with Caitlin to create some art, just in case I disappear. <laughs> That's also another first for me. Hmm. Yeah, travelers in our own worlds, because when we hear of people who are abroad or living in other places that seem exotic to us, sometimes it's easy to forget to folks who live there. It's not so exotic. It becomes every day. It becomes a part of your own world. And I can't imagine, I was going to say average, but you know, we all, it's just a normal human thing. We take things for granted from time to time. We just do that. Can use that as a guide. And I'm just going to eyeball this paper. I'm not going to get too fussy about it. It's a little notch right there. Because junk journal pages should be a little bit wonky. And of course, this is the living room, so no perfection allowed. It's a nice reminder that wherever home is for you, it's part of human nature sometimes to begin to take it for granted. So what can we do to catch ourselves or to make it, to bring back the life into that experience, that beauty, that wonder? If anyone else has any little techniques or tips or things you like to do to help with that, please let me know. I feel like they could almost be their own little stories or workshops because not all workshops, again, have to be about making things. Sometimes it's about creating experiences and engaging with one another or through one another, uh, through moving out in the world and challenging how we see things. All right. Oh, nice. So Nicole says, we also recently bought a fabric travel cage for our dog. It sort of looks like a tent. The cat has decided to claim it as her own. So she sleeps in it all day. <laughs> that is very much a cat kind of thing to do, if you don't mind me saying. So what am I going to do now? I had some of this elastic cording around. so going to cut some of this 
and use it to hold my pages together. So with this kind of journal, that's one of the fun things. You don't even need to have fancy elastic. You can just have like a rubber band that comes with your groceries. And you just want to tie it securely enough that it keeps your pages in place. Those things don't slide around too much. If you wanted to get super, super fancy, you could punch holes in here and weave the elastic through to kind of create more structure for your journal. That's pretty good. And I just wrapped it around this, which was a bit of Bristol board or cardstock. And there you have it. Now, if you wanted to get really fancy, you could add in other elements to this, envelopes, stamps, decorate the inside as much as you want. But with this kind of journal again, what it means is that you can take this cover wherever you go and just replace the pages as you need to. And Nicole's saying, I'm going to try and starch, let me see if I get this right, starch my mountains. Oh, starch your mountains of doilies this week. Why? May I ask, why are you starching your mountain of doilies? Inquiring minds want to know. Okay, how do I feel? So for the last bit of this project, and let's see, what do I got? Do I have a power cord here somewhere? Somewhere? No, I don't. Oh, rookie mistake, rookie streaming mistake. So you know what I might do? I might end this live stream a little bit early just so we don't go black, but I'm going to see if I can squeeze this last bit of the last bit of the project in before we go. And Nicole saying you can actually sew a line where the binding would be. I did it with an elementary school book once. Absolutely, Nicole. So uh, you can hand stitch this and pierce this with an awl, so an, you know, A-W-L, I think that's how you spell it. Just a little pointy thing here that's often used in book binding. And then you can use different kinds of cords or strings or threads to stitch it together. And of course there are lots of fancy stitches out there for book binding. But what's great about this kind of project is, um, just as I'd mentioned before, you can tear, like take out pages, remove pages, or add new pages in as you go. So another thing about it that makes this a traveler's journal is you can also incorporate things you find along the way on your journey. So that could be flyers to things you love or tickets or various things. The elastic just kind of tucks everything in and keeps everything secure. And Nicole says, I'm searching my doilies. So, oh, starching, starching your doilies so they lay flat. Interesting. Are you going to be using them in a, any kind of projects? Or just to have around the house? So for the last thing I'm going to do with this today, I think, I want to create some kind of statement here. So I think in classic Mary form, the symbol I reach to and reach for more often than anything else, the heart. Just my wonky heart. And Simone says, I have to go now. Thank you for the lovely conversation, everyone. And thank you, Simone, for being here. Always appreciate it. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, no matter where you are. And if you have to go as well, that's totally fine. I just cut this heart out of some contact paper. Contact paper is one of those really fun things inexpensive things that you can use to create stencils and things like that to block out things. I'm just going to throw that on there and use it as, even as a bit of a palette. Ooh, hello. Pour this paint. Have some fun with this color. I'm 
And I'm just using acrylic paint, nothing too fancy for this. If you had fabric paint, you could of course use that. But what I'm hoping for paint is that it'll still be soft enough once it's dry that I can stitch through it and have a little more fun. And I'm going to add other elements to this, but I wanted to just do something really big and bold and bright on the cover of the journal. And Nicole's saying just to make them stay flat for the moment. So the doilies will be starched to stay flat for the moment. You don't really have a plan for them yet. I would love to see, maybe I should see if I can find this to post a link to. And if I wanted to, I could throw this on and make a block print with it, but I'm not gonna. For today, I'm just gonna set it aside and let it dry. There's a beautiful weaving project I saw where someone had uh, taken beautiful big uh, tree branches that had fallen and stitched between those doilies as a centerpiece. So the doilies were suspended between these branches and it became a beautiful kind of dream catchery experience. And it was, um, just really lovely, a new take on fiber and textile arts and weaving uh, and using natural objects to complement it. It was really lovely. And again, another way of looking at the materials that we have all around us, using things that we already have to create beautiful things with. And goodness knows if you're going on for going for walks and parks, on any given find some twigs and branches that you can use. I know I've been picking up a few here and there. Oh, lovely. And Wendy's saying, thanks, Mary. I now know what to do with the 